You may have already come across this page, which allows you to draw numbers from 0 to 9 and have them recognized by an artificial intelligence. I can write whatever I want on the slate and the algorithm tries to recognize my number with varying degrees of success. If you are familiar with machine learning, you may not be surprised to see this kind of application online. But would you if I told you that this type of AI can be trained without having access to a dataset? In this video, we are going to talk about federated learning. It is a subject that has been talked about a lot in the scientific literature for several years. I offer you a dive into this exciting field and in a few minutes you will understand how it works and the reasons which pushed Google researchers to invent it. Federated learning is a learning method that is distributed across multiple machines. This approach coexists with others in a field called distributed learning. This method is distinguished from other approaches by its application framework. This field aims to solve problems in which data is distributed across multiple machines and it is difficult to move it. There are several reasons why data cannot be moved. The first one is that it belongs to someone who does not wish to share it with others. This is often the case in industries that handle sensitive data, such as the banking sector or the hospital sector. Let's imagine that a hospital sets up an artificial intelligence system to detect lung cancer from chest X-rays. Hundreds of patient radios from this hospital will be used to train the artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, it takes a very large amount of data to perform this type of learning effectively. The hospital data might not be enough, and using data from multiple hospitals would help to train our algorithm better. But these are sensitive data which are protected by laws in order to respect the privacy of patients. The problem is all the more present if the data is shared within hospitals in several countries, with different rules regarding their management. The use of this data poses serious ethical problems. To illustrate, it could be used to improve pharmaceutical laboratory marketing and that is not really our objective. The second reason that can prevent us from moving them is that they are simply too bulky compared to the capacity of our network. We can encounter this problem when working on embedded computing. If sensors collect a lot of data in remote places in the world, it is very likely that they do not have very high bandwidth and that it is impossible to repatriate the data to a calculation server. In short, the data exists, but for the two reasons I have just mentioned, it cannot always move. This is why federated learning was invented. This type of learning makes it possible to share knowledge learned among different actors and to aggregate it in the form of more general knowledge, which does not require the movement of data. Federated learning is most often used with deep learning. There are other approaches, but I won't talk about them. Here I will focus on the most common use and on the vanilla version invented by Google. When we talk about federated learning, we are most often talking about its initial version as designed in 2017 by Google researchers. Before going any further, we must understand two key concepts of deep learning. The first is the learning model. In a popular way, it corresponds to the shape of the neural network which will learn on the data. The model will define the number of neurons and how they are connected together. The second concept is that of parameters. Parameters are decimal values representing the strength of the connection between two neurons. The set of parameters of a model at a time t therefore correspond to a vision of the learning carried out by the model. To better understand the federated learning, let's take the example of a state which wishes to improve its lung cancer detection system and a group of hospitals which holds confidential X-rays of their patients. The first step is to design a deep learning model capable of detecting this type of cancer. This model will be initialized in a server which will transmit its parameters to all the hospitals participating in the experiment. Once received, the clients will reuse the server parameters and optimize them with their local data as would be done for centralized learning. In this case, they use the X-rays present in the hospital to train. The clients will then share the new parameter values with the server. The objective of the server is to generalize the learning of each client by averaging the parameters of their model. In a way, it's like averaging out how much customers learn from each other. Thus, the server-side model will capture the learning carried out on each client's data and should be more general and efficient than client's models, which have been trained with a limited amount of data. This learning phase that we have just seen is called a round, a bit like in boxing. It is by carrying out several successive series of rounds that the overall model of the server will be able to learn effectively. 
At the end of the training, the server will therefore be able to detect lung cancer more reliably than each hospital individually without ever having seen a single piece of data. You now know the general principle of federated learning. I hope you liked this little introduction. I would be curious to have your opinion on this technology. Tell me in the comments how you think about using it or what you could do with it. And then like or share if you enjoyed this video. Do not hesitate to leave a comment if you would like me to address a particular topic of computer science research in a future video. Thank you everyone and see you soon.